I am so excited for today's video because we are tier ranking all of the book talk books that I have read. Oh, no. <laughs> Falls. Not all of them, probably like 40-ish, but I've got romanticy and YA and romance and some other books that probably do not fit in those categories. But I'm excited because I love a ranking video. So let's talk book talk. It's going to be a good time. Let's have a good time. So I have my laptop and I also have the tier ranking list up, but we need to talk about the tiers. I feel like we're going to start off with the best tier and that is Lola Love This. Just picture me shouting it. I'm not going to shout it in this moment, but just picture it. This is where I'm just going to put every book that I'm absolutely obsessed with. Don't know how many is going to go on this list. It could be VIP. I don't know. Then the tier under that is a fun time. Sometimes books are just enjoyable, but they're not necessarily a favorite. That's where I'm going to put all of those books. It's pretty self-explanatory. Then we have the middle tier and this is I def recommend but and I feel like there are some books where I'm like yeah I would totally recommend this but just know this going in and that's where I'm gonna put all of those books. Then I've got was okay just an okay read and then the last tier the lowest tier it's a no for me. Throwing it back to old school American Idol where Randy Jackson used to say that to us. <laughs> used to be like, it's a no for me, dog. And I just remember like being a child and just being like, that's a nice way to tell someone you're not advancing to the next stage of American Idol. Feel very powerful in this moment. So let's get started. We're starting off hot with Powerless. And I feel like immediately people are going to be like, say you love this cat. Say you love this. I wanted to. I wanted to so bad. I think that the things that work in this book are the enemies to lovers. Shouldn't it be like rivals to lovers? Because they're both a part of these trials. I don't know. I don't know. The banter between them was enjoyable. But for me personally, I need more from the world building and the magic and just all of the outside things I had a lot of questions on. So I'm gonna put it in twas okay. But I am excited to see where this goes because the end of that book caught my attention. So we'll see. Reckless could could woo me. Then we're changing it up and we're going to do adult fantasy. Adult romanticy, I would say. There's Vikings, there's gods, there's powers, there's a chosen one. I loved the beginning and I liked the end of this. The middle kind of lost me a little bit and the female main character, man, she was making some decisions. And I was like, girl, <laughs> are you doing it for the plot? What's happening here? All that aside, I would say I def recommend. Just know that the filming character may frustrate you, but I feel like it's part of the bigger picture. So middle tier. Then we have the elite Daisy Jones and the Six. If you don't know anything about this book, think Fleetwood Mac, but Taylor Jenkins Reid style, you know, the TV miniseries, stellar, the music, excellent, the audiobook, superb. Lola love this. No other place. No other place. <sighs> this book. Oh my gosh, A Thousand Boy Kisses. I'm convinced that this was written just to make people cry. I sobbed uncontrollably so much that I couldn't see properly. And that sounds like I'm being funny or dramatic. No, I really, really sobbed during this to the point where I didn't finish it. I Why did I put it in this list? <laughs> I'm going to put it in I def recommend but because who knows it could get better it could not but just know if you're going to pick this up you might cry. I bawled. I bawled for a long time. Oh The Inheritance Games. This is the movie Knives Out but in a book format made for a YA audience but you could read this at any age because it's so fun. I think that the first book's my favorite and the rest of the series is kind of like some I really love and some I love not so much. So I think overall, I would say that this is a fun time and I will read these books until they're no longer written. I don't know what the end game is, but I'm here for the ride. Ooh, oh my gosh. Well, okay. Now we're going to talk about Once Upon a Broken Heart. This is the companion sequel to Carball. It's like a circusy, magical, who done it, who do you trust, mystery adventure ride with romance. And this follows characters that you meet in that first series. I really enjoyed this first book. And then the second book, I was like, yes, <laughs> look at this. This could be a new favorite. Didn't love how it ended. Didn't love book three. So I think... <sighs> It's a fun time. It's a fun time. It's just hard when like the third book wasn't wasn't it, you know? I feel like that's a good a good place for it to go. Did anyone else feel this way? <laughs> then we have Spark of the Overflame. This is huge right now on KU. It is adult fantasy romance. People say it's giving Akatar. I personally did not get that from this book. This one specifically, I think this is the first of four. This one felt like the book that sets up everything. So you're learning about the world building, the magic system, the characters, everything is just to set up future books. So I feel like I'm going to put in, I def recommend, but know that this is groundwork. 
in my opinion. Now it's time for us to talk about Mariana Zapata books. This one from Woke Up With Love is Tessa and Scott Coded. That's just what this is, except if they didn't get along. I will say this, the main character, she comes off as kind of negative. She did seem a bit complainy for a big chunk of that, which was a big deterrent when I was reading this. But once once things are happening, they're happening. So I feel like the best place for me to put this is a fun time. I remember listening to the audiobook of this and something happened and I was like, what? <laughs> it was not okay. I'm not saying things aren't okay in the book, but I was not okay when I heard the haps. I actually did a review on this next one, Bride Valley Hazelwood. I feel like this one was just okay for me. I had a lot of expectations and I also have a lot of preferences when it comes to fantasy romance, especially if it's like a vampire and a slayer or like a vampire and a werewolf. There's just specific needs that I have that definitely got in the way of this. So I think that for now it, it was just okay. It's not my favorite Allie Hazelwood book, but like she writes it, I'll read it. It's just, it's just the way it is. Love in other words, the only option is to put it in Lola Love This because I think it's my favorite book by Christina Lauren. I have only read this once and I think about it all the time. And I don't think I'm emotionally equipped to reread it at this moment in time in my life, but I want to, and maybe soon. Small town romance, friends to lovers, childhood friends to lovers, second chance romance, dual timeline, bookish, yeah. Yeah, I love this. Now we're just talking about lessons in chemistry. This is a book where I would 100% recommend the audiobook. I understand why this one has won awards, why it's nominated, why there's cold stickers and people pick it as their favorite. I get it. I love Elizabeth Zott. I love this story. I love every single thing about this, even the pain in the pages, which there's not a lot, but there's, there's, there's some things that happen that you're just like, Elizabeth, you're a queen. It's actually more than a fun time. I don't know if I necessarily love, love this, but it feels like a crime to put it in a fun time. I'm gonna put it in the top tier. I'm gonna put it in top tier. I have to. I love this book. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Feel like not enough people have read it. And we need to talk about that more. The Prison Healer. This is a series, a YA fantasy series. The main character in this was wrongfully imprisoned. She's now the prison healer and she has been brought a rebel and they're like, hey, you gotta keep her alive at all costs. And just like shenanigans happen from there. The first book is good. The second book. And then the third book. I love, I love this. Daughter of the Pirate King. The best way for me to put this is that it's giving Pirates of the Caribbean vibes. I will never not love pirates. I love all of them. The first one is the best. The soundtrack of the third one really, really hits home. So uh, to no one's surprise, I love this. It's why fantasy gold, why romanticy gold, I should say. I like it a lot. Oh, Petri. I believe that this was my first Emily Henry book. Two writers, rival writers, decide to, you know, team up, challenge each other, write some stuff, fall in love, summer romance, small town. I love this. I don't love this next one. I'm so sorry. Trial of the Sun Queen. It's a dull romance. I believe they're all available on KU. I think they're also traditionally published by Forever Publishing. The female main character in the romance that was happening just like didn't, it just didn't make sense to me. So I'm going to say it's, it's a no for me, but I'm happy for anyone who loves this book, who loves the series. I wish I felt the same. Ooh, we got the love hypothesis. <laughs> Easy peasy. I love this. Fake dating, women in STEM, and he is absolutely gone for her. And it's, it's, it's Raylo fanfic. What's not to like? I think this was the book that convinced me that I enjoy fake dating. Now it's time for us to talk about The Summer I Turned Pretty. And like, let's just take a moment and talk about The Summer I Turned Pretty, okay? I'm obsessed. I love the show. I love the show so much. I hyperfix say every once in a while and I just watch the first two seasons from like episode four or five and then all the episodes of season two the books though the books were difficult the books were difficult to get through the third book was shocking <laughs> like I cannot believe that they're filming season three right now they're filming all of those things happening and Jenny Han I love Jenny Han because I love to all the boys I love before too this makes me feel a little uncomfy but I'm gonna have to say that it's a no for me just the book series if we talk about the tv show which I'm not saying is astronomically different or better. I just enjoy it more. Anyone else? Tell me better than the movies. This is 12 rom-coms in one. Filming character is crushing on this guy and then she asks her next door neighbor to help her get the guy. <laughs> and it's so great. It's got a bunch of tropes. Why romance? It's honestly, it's in between a fun time and Lola loved this. Because there's like an embarrassment, like a huge embarrassment factor that happens in this book that makes me question. Who am I kidding? I love it. The Hunger Games. Iconic. There's no notes. Love everything about it. Love this book. Love Catching Fire more. Love this series as a whole. Love that we're getting a Hamish movie. Love that we're getting a Hamish book. 
book? Yes. Yes. Then we have Caraval. I would say that this is a fun time. This first book got me caught up. I was like, who do I trust? What's happening? It was like Shutter Island, but make it a circus. Actually, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not that at all. I just didn't know who was good and who wasn't. And there was just so many magical elements. I was like, be careful. Be careful. So yes, the first and third, but you got to read the whole series. And you have to read this before you read the Once Upon a Time Companion sequel series or it just won't, it won't hit the same way. Legends and Lattes. Legends and Lattes. This is Cozy Fantasy, the female main character. I believe she's an orc and she was a mercenary and now she's looking to open up a coffee shop. That's literally all you need to know. That's basically the gist of the story. If you're looking for like crazy rise of action and all of that good stuff, you're not going to get it with this. This is relaxing. I read this like a bedtime story. <laughs> I remember I took the entire time of my loan to read this. I just read a little bit every night before bed and it was great. So I would recommend this. Just know it's super chill. It is the definition of chill. It's cozy fantasy and coffee. Oh, shadow and bone, shadow and bone. So it's okay. I think that the world building and the magic system is the most interesting part of the series. I remember liking the first book and I remember really struggling with the second one and I have no idea how it ends. So it was okay. Absolutely yes to an ember in the ashes. This is Roman inspired diverse fantasy with romance. Some of the best characters. The magic system is fantastic. The villain is terrifying. I can't handle anything that makes my heart like really anxious. I was anxious reading this, but it was worth it. And the fourth book in this just ties everything up together. We're getting a companion sequel, I think. Is it a series? I don't know, but we're getting more. So yes. And I, I like this cover redesign. Throne of Glass. Absolutely. Yes. I feel like if you look at it as a series whole, there's no other place to put this than this category. I understand some people love certain books more than others. That's going to happen when you have like, a how many books are in the series? I think it's fun. I think it's easy to get into. I think the characters are great, the romance and the whole story. It really builds in a really good way. So yeah. Thorn of Glass, Thorn of Glass. A Tempest of Tea. I read this with my book club. I personally really vibed with this, but I remember when I was reading it, I was like, can we get to the heist? Can we get to the heist? I need the heist. There's vampires, there's tea. It's kind of giving Six of Crows a little bit. More so like the setting really reminded me of Six of Crows, not so much the heist. So I would say... I def recommend, but just know that personally, I felt like the pacing was a little off, but I definitely recommend reading it because the ending, like the last 20, 25%, I was sold. I was sold on that. Belladonna. If you follow me, you know, there is no other place for this to go, but Lola loved this. Gothic, romanticy, there is a mystery. Everything about it is good. Like I said, I don't really do spooks. This didn't spook me. <laughs> the audiobook is so good. Oh, House of the... Okay, I don't know why I'm surprised I put these here. I, for I forgot though which ones I did. House in the Cerulean Sea. Okay, this is where I'm struggling. This is where I'm struggling because where do I put this? Because I feel like it's in between Lola loved this and a fun time. The characters. Oh, the characters were so great. I think, uh, I think I'm going to put in a fun time because it's not like a new favorite, but I definitely would reread it. I think there's a sequel out or coming out. So many books, two little time. Song of Achilles. I did a buddy read for this. I was sad. I remember though that I couldn't binge this. Oh, I actually don't know where I put this. Okay, I think I have to put it in I def recommend, but it's gonna hurt your soul. I think it's stellar. I think it's worth it. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful story. It just made me cry, made me cry. Okay, speaking of books that made me cry, The Dead Romantics. A ghostwriter has to go home, deal with her past and some loss and there's love and I... I def recommend, but just know, just know it's, it could change you fundamentally to read this book. I won't read it again anytime soon though. The Seven Year Slip on the other hand, I love this. My only problem with this book is that it was, it was too short and it's not even a short book. I was just so in it. Like I was so invested. Feel my character moves into her aunt's place. It's an apartment. She walks in, there's a guy there and it turns out he's living like seven years in the past. It's giving Lake House. I love the Lake House. So yeah. I love this. I love this. I'm so excited for her next read. Then we have another Mara and Zvada book. We have The Wall of Winnipeg and Me, which I always forget the and me. I'm always like The Wall of Winnipeg. Like that's what it's called. It's not. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. This wasn't, it didn't, it's a no for me. I remember there was things in it that, that I was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> 
just things, some things didn't work. I think that he was hot. And I think that his alpha energy was great. Marriage of convenience, which is a fun trope. But yeah, it's a no for me. Okay, the seven husbands don't listen to this audiobook in public. Because I remember I finished this in a parking lot. And I was crying. Good tears. But tears nonetheless. I love it. I do. I love it. I think it's one of my favorite books by her. It follows Evelyn Hugo, who is morally gray, in my opinion. And it takes you through her life and shows you all of her relationships. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. The fine print. Oh, yes, I love it. It's a comfort read for me. It's the ultra comfort read for me. I remember reading this when I had the flu. And by the time I was done this book, I did not have the flu anymore. I truly believe the serotonin in this healed my body. And it basically takes place in Disney. Grumpy sunshine, it's diverse. Yes. Okay, then we have Shatter Me. And I'm just going to talk about the series as a whole. I like book two. I love book three. And I love book five. Book five, I was like, I see the vision. I get it. Everything makes sense. But then there are some other books where I'm just like, what? What? So I would definitely recommend. But just know that for me, there are some standouts and some things that very much did not work. And I do think that the plot is wild. I think that some some things took like very far left turns. I couldn't keep up. And you have to suspend belief with the series. But it's so entertaining. <laughs> it's a mixed bag. So I would definitely recommend, especially for the romance. And I like Warner. I like Warner a lot. And I love Kenji. I love Kenji so much. Heartstopper. Heartstopper. You have there's no other place. I love it. Okay, well now we've got to all the boys I've loved before. And I love this series. I think that it's pretty freaking great. So I'm gonna say that it's a fun time. I haven't reread it in a while. I don't think since like before COVID. Read them, loved them, no notes. Things we never got over. This is so, 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 so popular. And I feel like it's an excellent Grumpy Sunshine. I think parts of this were so wild to me that I couldn't get with it. And I always put myself in the book. This is something I do. So I couldn't get with some of the things that were happening in this book. What the frick? So I'm gonna say that it's a no for me. That feels so unpopular. But yeah, I have to speak my truth. I have to speak my truth. Every summer after. I wanted to love this, um, but I, oh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, it was okay. And I can't talk about it without spoiling it. People say that it's like love in other words. And I kind of agree. It's basically this girl, she goes up to a college every year. There's neighbors, the neighbors are boys. There's love, summer romance, pain. It happened one summer. This is such a popular Tessa Bailey book. I think this was the first one that I read by her. I'm gonna say it was okay. It was okay. You know, I just didn't really love the female main character. You know, we just didn't connect on a soul level and that's okay. That fisherman though, Brendan? Brennan? Brendan, I think it's Brendan. If you're looking for some spice, go ahead, pick that one up. It will disappoint. We're about to have a little chatty poo about fourth wing. This is a worldwide sensation, I feel. It is so popular and I do understand the hype. I think that this built so well. The author of this made such an accessible fantasy read. I do think that this delivers enemies to lovers. I do like the banter between those love interests. This sounds so specific, but there were aspects of this that just didn't work. For example, the dragons, how the dragons talk. I feel so silly saying this. I don't think the dragons would talk like that. You're you're a full grown dragon. <laughs> You've seen some stuff. You've breathed fire. I just, I couldn't suspend belief with aspects of this plot. I don't think that the writing necessarily clicked with me either. I did really like the ending and it's up in the air if I'll continue the series. But I would recommend this to new readers, new romantic readers. I just think that I've read other things that I enjoy more. So so I feel like I'm going to put it in Twas Okay. A Dawn of Onyx. This is really popular right now. I tried and I did not succeed. So I'm going to say it's a no for me. There are lands and there's war and people people need a savior. And there's a man who, you know, he's feeling the female character. So if that sounds like your jam, pick it up. But it just like wasn't a good fit. Six of Crows. Absolutely love this. I think that this is my favorite book by Lee Bardugo. It's just a perfect duology. I hear that we're getting more. I want more. I'm here for it. YA, morally great characters. There's a heist. You can't go wrong. It's so good. So I've been getting some comments recently on like various shorts asking my thoughts on The Cruel Prince because I don't talk about it often on my channel. That's because I feel like this was mismarketed to me because people say that it's like 
you got to read it for Jude and Carden. And those are the main characters in this. And yes, you do. But there's so much other stuff that happens. This is fey shenanigans. This is fey politics. There is backstabbing. There's morally gray characters. There's all that kind of stuff happening before you kind of like get to the goods of the romance. Yes, I read a lot of romance. But when I read this, I was in my fantasy era. Okay, so from that standpoint, I was like, this is different than it was described to me. So I would definitely recommend just know that it's a story that builds off of things that happen. And there are some things that happen, especially in that first book. Then we have Flawless. This is the first book in the Chestnut Spring series. I've read all of them except for the last book. So I've read four out of the five. This is for adults. <laughs> this is Cowboy Romance Spice. The whole series is just like alpha men. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, lots of alpha energy. I think my favorite is the fourth book so far, but I love Flawless. So I would say it's a fun time. Like you're just gonna have a lot of fun with it. Like cowboys. <laughs> Actar. Absolutely love this. I'm ranking this one as a series as a whole. I love the series. I think that there are some that stand out more than others. Like my favorite is definitely book two. I love this series. I think it's amazing. Thank you, Sarah J. Mass. Kingdom of the Wicked. Here's the thing. I loved this first book. The female main character, she's a witch, but witches have to be hidden. And there is a murder and she teams up with the Prince of Hell to solve the murder. I really vibed with the first book. The second book was just such a departure from that first book. So what do I do? I would definitely recommend the first book. That's all I can say. Then the last book on this list is Done and Dusted. This is a cowboy romance series that is giving Chestnut Springs, but it's also giving Lovelight Farms. And to rank the three books that I've read, the third book comes out in November. I love, love this. I, who am I kidding? The first book I liked, the second book I really, really liked, and then the third book was flawless. So yeah, as a series, yeah. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. So now that we have ranked all the books, I want to hear your thoughts. If you agree with some of my rankings, if you disagree, let me know in the comments. And also if I missed any books that you want to see me rank, comment those down below and I will add them to the next time that I do this video. Because even though some of these books have been on the book talk tables, been on these lists for a while, but there's always new books being added. So this is not the last time that I'm going to make this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye, book lovers.